Hey guys, how's it going? Well, welcome to the next episode of uh, a Crime Pace Popotnik, doesn't that? Anyways, I, it's about 12.30 at night and I'm standing uh, beneath uh, presumably a second growth dove fir uh, on an area in Northern California with a very rich soil, just basically thousands of years of uh, detritus falling, decomposing. It's a very spongy duff. Now the base rock here is a granite, of course, but but uh, of course, you know, that's once you go beneath the, you know, 10 to 20 feet of soil, at least. Probably more than that, I don't know. You have to ask an actual geologist. Anyways, here, because I want to show you a plant that's uh, one of my favorite species of uh, orchid in California. It's a terrestrial orchid that lacks chlorophyll. And uh, like you might have guessed already, if you've seen some of the other videos, it actually steals its carbohydrates as well as its, uh, its water from uh, fungi in the ground. In this case, a species of... Uh, this fungi that's the symbiotic with the other surrounding trees, it's what you call being mycorrhizal. Now that the, that the g species is in the genus Thelophoraceae, that species of fungi, they're known as the leathery earth fans. I didn't name it, okay? It's just the messenger. But uh, we're going to go check out this plant and uh, show you what it does. Okay, now, now I am in a bush, okay? And it is late at night, and if uh, somebody were to see me, they would probably just, uh, you know, think I was a tweaker, of which uh, Siskiyou County does have many. Uh, just imagine that, the uh, decades of uh, conservative uh, religious politics, there wasn't enough to prevent people from getting into methamphetamine. Might have even accelerated it. Anyway, uh, like I said, they would presume I was a tweaker, okay, but uh, it doesn't really concern me because I'm uh, relatively far removed from... Uh, from uh, anybody who might uh, presume to give a shit. Let's start off with a species inventory real quick. Got some nice that toxicodendron right there, the poison oak, nice ash rash plant in the Anacardiaceae, the mango and uh, sumac family. Then we got a species of uh, Acerum, known as the wild gingers, but uh, no relation to ginger at all. It's actually in the uh, the uh, pipe vine family, Aristolochiaceae. And uh, we got some nice uh, Acer. Now we're almost at the southern end of this range. Well, I guess it goes it does go into central coastal California a little bit, but uh, the trees, you know, we get them in the Bay Area too, in the Oakland Hills, but they don't get that big there. They don't get that big. They look kind of, you know, like they're kind of struggling a little bit, you know, they're not, uh, they need a lot of water, you know, like many maples. I believe there's only two or three populations of uh, maples in Mexico, and those are at the higher elevations. And in California, uh, we get quite a few species of maple, but they're all in a, you know, the coastal or northern areas of the state, you know, because they need more water. But you go up to, like, Washington or something, they got a lot of tweakers up there. They also got the Fred Myers and shit. But anyway, you go up to Washington, and, uh, you know, the maples on there are about, you know, two, three feet in diameter, just covered in mosses. But here, this is, this county right here, maybe a little bit south of here, and closer to the coast is when they start getting big. You especially go closer to the coast, you got uh, not as hot summers and more, uh, more moisture. Now over here we got another species. If I gotta be sure not to touch that damn poison oak, get a bad ass rash. Happened to me once or twice. Uh, now we got right here. We got a species of a tan oak. It's a subspecies of tan oak in the genus Nothalithocarpus. Fagaceae is the family. Okay, you know the oak family with the shit chestnuts and beeches and all that. This is a, a species of well, what they call tan bark oak. Well, not a species. It's a subspecies. But this subspecies never gets taller than like six or seven feet. Okay, it's in the genus again, not the lithocarpus dense of flores, and this is the dwarf subspecies, which you start getting in Mendocino County and Humboldt and uh, Siskius and shit. I'll bound up in Oregon a little bit. You know, it tends to be more montane though, and we are at about an elevation of maybe 2,500 feet over there. Jack, you worried about cougars? You should be. You're like the prime size, you know, and judging by your weight, you know, you got, a, you got everything. I mean, you got the, you really got the bod. You know, just a little, a little compact sausage. You even know what I'm saying to you over there? You never listen to me anymore. You just, you know, I, okay. Okay, now, you know, as we crawl deeper into the bush, and I'm especially looking like a tweaker, okay? But, you know, I wanted to do this at night for a good reason, because the colloquial name of this plant is the phantom orchid, and, you know, I thought it sounds a little bit more spooktacular, you know, you turn the lights out, you know, do it in the dark, you know, it makes it, it gives you kind of, you know, it runs with the theme a little bit. You know, like when you're going to the, uh, the, the Halloween stores that set up in abandoned strip malls, but you, you go there, you got no intention of buying nothing, but you just, you know, you want to go there. Maybe you take your friend or your kid and you just uh, try out a mask, beat each other with the fake weapons and stuff and cause a scene and eventually get the, get the uh, police called on you. Uh, it's never happened to me. I just, you know, anyway. All right, let's get to the plant we're showing you over here. Now, you can see why they call it the Phantom Orchid. 
just standing out like a uh, like a beacon in the night. Okay, a chlorophyllus, no chlorophyll whatsoever. And here we go. Here's here it is. What a banger it is too. Cephalanthra austiniae. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Flowers barely open. Okay, so you got no leaves. You just got a straight racine poking up out the duff. Now, being that this duff is composed entirely of, uh, you know, decompose, decomposing plant matter, uh, you know, dug fir needles, uh, you know, maple bark, uh, you know, just, to, I mean, <laughs> now you had a couple thousand years left of that. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Nice, nice up close to that, uh, that uh, perianth right there. Look at it, just a solitary raceme. You know, but sometimes you can, I mean, you normally get them coming up in clumps. Just a solitary raceme of orchid coming up. You know, with no chlorophyll in it, nothing. Now, the genus Cephalanthra, uh, this is the only species in the genus in North America. You know, but the genus Cephalanthra, uh, you know, most of the members, I think it's got like 18 or 19 species in it, and most of them got chlorophyll. Most of them, uh, well, all, all orchids are, you know, mycoheterotrophic, that is, they parasitize uh, fungi, at least as seedlings, you know. I mean, it's how to, the seeds of orchids uh, need uh, need fungi to germinate. They're you know, just a little powder. They look like powder. You know, some, some orchids have flowers that can produce a million seeds. But uh, anyway, this guy, you know, all orchids are, as I was saying, all orchids are initially mycoheterotrophic. Just a fancy way to say they uh, parasitize fungi. But, uh, you know... The other species in the genus Cephalanthra, they, they uh, you know, mature and, of course, end up producing chlorophyll and, in turn, of course, producing their own food via the sun. But you got six species in that genus that, uh, you know, are entirely parasitic on fungi in the ground. And uh, this is one of them. But it's the only one in North America, you know. Parasitic or non-parasitic, there's the only species of Cephalanthra in North America. You know, but there's a, there is a species of cephalanthra, I believe it's in a Japan, somewhere in Asia, that uh, is, uh, it's, you know, photosynthetic, it's got chlorophyll in it, but then every once in a while it produces uh, these albino, albino plants. And they, they do just fine because, again, they're just tapped into that, that mycorrhizae underground. So at some point, this relationship, you know, it, it was symbiotic between the orchid and the fungi initially and then at some point over the vast span of deep time uh this plant just evolved to be fully parasitic on fungi now what the what the clad what group of fungi does uh does this uh, plant parasitize that would be in a, the family Thelophoraceae, colloquially known as the uh, leathery earth fans okay don't kill me don't get mad at me i'm just a messenger don't kill the messenger okay but basically what they look like is little turkey tail mushrooms that pop out of the ground. But they're symbiotic with a, a pretty wide variety of uh, trees, both conifers and hardwoods. Look at it. Look at the tissue's almost glistening. Oh, yeah, that's nice. See, this guy's barely open. You know, you got to catch them on a good day when they're open. You know, a lot of times they're not open. I, I was up here last year. It was a little late. And I didn't see them. But two years ago, I seen them. All open and nice, full anthesis. See, they flower from the bottom up. I mean, typical racine uh, behavior. For uh, those of you who might not be uh, familiar with uh, the floral physiology. Looks like somebody got it. Maybe one of the trips got it. One of the thrips. Because I seen one of them on there already. It's a fucking beautiful plant. Just, you know. Just hordes of them, just coming up, coming up, uh, that being a duff. Isn't it spectacular? Look at it. You feel kind of spooky, huh? When's the last time you did something? Halloween's the only, uh, I think it's the only uh, holiday I celebrate. You know, because it's just, it's kind of dark, but it's kind of jolly too and shit. You know, just like uh, some of my favorite people. Oh, look at that. Beautiful Quercus Calagiae. Just a huge black oak. So you can see on the leaves, it tends to look like Oregon white oak, Quercus gariana, but uh, it's got you know it's got the little pointy, uh, pointy bits on the, uh, the teeth of the leaf, the lobes of the leaf. See that? And look, you got all the moss on there. 
on the north side. You know, because you got to open, you can't see up there, because you got to open it in the canopy right there, you know. So it's, it's going to hang out on there. This whole forest is going to burn one day. I worry about it. You know, because we get more goddamn fires every year since we get, you know, a little bit less rain. Too, too much, you know, rain used to start in October, now it starts in early December. Last the, God, then we had a drought for four or five years. I mean, look at it. Oh, look at it. Hey, hi, this is uh, Kevin from Kevin's Towing Service uh, uh, calling for Mr. Schwartz. Uh, we do, in fact, have your 1997 Pontiac sedan. It's on the lot here at Western and Roosevelt. I uh, just wanted to let you know we did get the notifications and documents from the CPD informing us that the car is indeed registered under your name. As to date, it's accrued about... Uh, 22 days worth of storage fees, which comes out to a, a mean bill of 725.63. We accept uh, payment uh, via cash or American Express. However, we do not accept checks. If you do not come claim this vehicle within the next two weeks, it will have a lien placed on it. Uh, thank you and have a nice day. Bye. Oh, it's been so long. I promise never to leave you that long again. It's been two years since I've seen you flowering. Hey, you see any, uh, see any lift for a donor? I guess there's got to be, because that's where you're stealing all your fucking carbs from. Down here in the duff. Do you like the duff, huh? You like the shiny shit? You like the fuzzy shit? Huh? You like vine ma maples? Maple circinatum? Look at that guy. Another another music plant. Needs a very music. Needs a lot of uh, moisture in the ground. Doesn't tolerate this dry shit. Jeez, you know, I, just, I look at it and I start itching. It's, uh, you know, I think it's only uh, it's only partly psychosomatic. You know, there's a tree... And this family in Anacardiaceae in New Caledonia, Semacarpus, that uh, it gets massive. It looks like a fucking oak tree. And it, uh, you know, same thing. It's highly allergenic to some people. I'm not sure if it's Eurasiol, the same the same chemical in a poison oak or what. But supposedly, if you're just standing under it, if you're allergic to it, it can set you off. Don't want to get too close. Jesus. Get a bad ass rash. Anyway, there you go. Look at that. Get up real close. Look at him. Look at him. Look at a perianth again. Look at a look at a co nice Corolla. It's got aphids on it. Gotta smush those bastards when I leave. Nice inner part of the perianth over there, glistening, shiny. Hey, you like the shiny shit? Oh, who's going in there? What's he doing in there? What's he doing? They got them in Idaho. This goes all the way up into Idaho. Probably goes into southern British Columbia, too. For sure, it's in Washington, you know, where they got the Fred Myers and the, the uh, more tweakers than we got down here. Certainly, the Oregonians got some of them, too. No leaves, just bracts. You like the bracts? Just coming up right out the duff like that. This used to, there used to be a population in Santa Barbara County down in Southern California, too, but then it got wiped out. Might still be there, but, uh, you know, as the, as the rainfall decreases and the summers get hotter, uh, this plant uh, will probably be wiped out in a southern part of its range, you know, just like uh, many plants. And they will move up to higher latitudes with the big C word that triggers all the grandpas, you know. But I'm not, God, Jack, I can smell your mouth. Holy shit. He's standing like six feet away from me. It's all a fucking pepperoni I get him. All right, nice segue away from a uh, rather controversial topic that uh, generates a lot of shitty, obnoxious commentary. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Look at this guy. Look how big he is. He's goddamn 18 inches tall over there. Another one. Can you imagine? Just think of how rich this soil must be. You know, you probably got dozens of species of fungi in there. You got your AM fungi, AM, you know, our buscular mycorrhizal. You got your ectomycorrhizal, you know, which is what the, the thelophoras are. You know, just a very rich, uh, you know, I mean, you go deep enough, you hit granite. There's granite down there. We're in a, it's a bedrock here, you know, but you, you got those uh, hundreds of thousands of years of, uh, Forest detritus just accumulating in a form of a very rich soil. 
you know, and this plant only occurs in a relatively intact forest, you know, not, not plantation agriculture, not plantation forests, you know, intact, generally unfucked with, at least to any large degree, forests, you know, which again are becoming uh, somewhat of a rarity. Anyway, there you go. One of my favorite, uh, probably my favorite uh, orchid species. Who's that? What's she doing? What are you doing over there? What are you doing there? One of my favorite species of uh, orchid in this state. Now, you got to love the mycoheterotrophs. There's a book on mycoheterotrophs that uh, Springer put out. You could steal it from Libgen over there. Just type in mycoheterotrophy. It's by a guy named Merckx, and he goes in. He goes real in depth into all the mycoheterotrophs. You know, you got a couple. You got a bunch in the family Ericaceae, the blueberry family. Of course, you got a bunch of uh, orchids that are mycoheterotrophs. Mycoheterotrophy is a wonderful thing. Who doesn't like it, huh? If you don't, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say you're an asshole. You know, and that's fine too. You could be like that. Maybe you're into, uh, you know, maybe you're into some weird shit that uh, I don't fully understand. I guess. But from a biological and evolutionary perspective, mycoheterotrophy is fucking fascinating. Get that book. It's on Libgen. Like I said, Springer's, Springer, they're assholes anyway. So, you know, you're stealing, from a, you're stealing for a good cause. Anyway, that's all I got for tonight. There you go. Nice money shot. Nice to uh, put them on a runway right there. Cephalanthra austinia. Or austinii. You know, like uh, lignum vitae is pronounced lignum vitae. You know, if you're really a stickler for Latin, but if you are, you can go fuck yourself even more than uh, the rest of you. Okay. Have a lovely rest of your night. Uh, I'm going to get out of here before someone calls the cops on me. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Oh, look at that. Mass. I can't even see what it is. Massive pine. It's not a dog fur. That's a pine. And you get this guy. Spends his whole life underground. His whole goddamn life underground, only coming up to flower. You know, and sometimes they don't flower. Sometimes they don't flower for 10 years. You know, they flower every year. You know, I've been coming here a long time. It's the same spots used to see him. I don't see him come up. You know, see him come up one year, there the next year, there's nothing. But they're coming up, you know, 15 feet away. And you gotta wonder, are they all the same plant? Is it all the same individual? You know, with just a massive underground root system. I mean, what you got basically is a plant that behaves more like a fungus. You know, fungi only send up their reproductive structures to fruit. You know, the whole underneath the whole the whole goddamn organism, the whole fucking organism just lives underground. In the case of a mycorrhizal fungus, you know, uh, of course, symbiotic with uh, trees. Its whole goddamn body. You know, basically just all the white uh, mycelium just, uh, you know, wrapped like a blanket, like a pig in a blanket around the tree roots. You know, or sometimes, you know, in the case of AM fungi, they actually go into the, the tree root. But, you know, it, it's a fine line between a plant and mushroom sometimes in these old forests with the rich soil and what the shit. I wonder what the fuck tree this is. I can't, can't tell. I mean, it's a pinus. I wonder if it's a Lambertiana, the, the sugar pine. Look at this guy. He's just standing up, standing at full attention. Huh? Who are you kidding? Ooh, show me your labellum. Show me your sexy labellum. Show me your pollinia, huh? You symbiotic with those uh, big leaf maples? What does he get a couple more? You symbiotic with the fungi that's uh, symbiotic with the big leaf maples? Oh, look at that. Look at his slaughter. Oh, he, he, he's, he hears me talking. He's responding probably to the reverberations of the fucking... Uh, peduncle on this uh, inflorescence, uh, this cephalanthria inflorescence, because I'm talking so fucking loud. Look at that. He's got a nice aphid in his mouth. Hey, it's nice. I like to keep those guys around. Anyway, look at this flower right here. Here's one that's uh, near full anthesis. You know, better, better than the, the shit I was showing you last night. There's a beautiful specimen right there. You got those uh, sepals open. Oh, yeah.